Hikar, it was amazing to see unfold there. And there's some great questions from the chat about you and Magnus and your rivalry. In some ways, do you consider this a kind of modern Kasparov-Karpov duel? I mean, uh, I, I guess you could say it over the last, like, three or four years since the pandemic began. I mean, I think, to be fair, if you go prior to that, um, what is a good example? I think a good example, I'm trying to think of, of like a European analogy, but I'll just use a baseball one. It's like comparing the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. I mean, the Red Sox won a World Series in 1918. They didn't win again until I think it was 2004. That's probably a better comparison. The Yankees won something like like 15 or 16 World Series during that time. So I don't think, um, I don't think you could, you could say that in terms of the early, early, early days, but you know, the last couple of years, I've found a way to play play well i mean I, I think the main thing is i don't fall apart against magnus in the past i would have fallen apart very quickly especially like this this third game where when he played uh queen h7 i had missed his queen h7 idea altogether um and even if you you know i do actually look at the cams i saw magnus's reaction when i played rook f8 and he realized that he had made a slight mistake too allowing that um so there's been a lot of back and forth the last couple of years um and i think yeah it's great for the fans for sure well, just on that note, Hikaru, you're talking about some of the psychology. Did you feel like you had the upper hand when you outbid Magnus in this Armageddon? No, I mean, I, I think the thing is in this event more so than the first one. Like the first one, I was, I, I think all of us were trying to be like super precise in our bids, see just how low you can go. Um, and I kind of was like, I'm just going to bid something. I, I didn't even really think about it that much. Uh, I was just like, make a bid. Who cares? You got white, you got white, you have six minutes, just deal with it. Um, and so there, there wasn't, I think, as much psychology going on. Um, but it was nice because I, I think if you go back to the first event, I think I was bidding something like, I bid like seven, was it like 757 against Wesley or something, something completely ridiculous. I mean, I got away with it, but um, no, I mean, I, I just, I was happy to be black having draws because of course in chess, most games do end in a draw something like 60% plus. So uh, that was an advantage, but still the opening I got was not good. Magnus complicated very early, um, but you just keep trying to play moves and I found a way. Great job, Icaro. Congratulations, uh, defensive wizard. So uh, we have a question from the chat actually here is what is your favorite thing to do after a chess game or match? Um, my favorite thing to do after a chess game or match is do a recap for YouTube and make money. That's uh, my favorite thing to do. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Hikari, congratulations. And looking ahead tomorrow, you get a chance for revenge against Fabi. What are your thoughts on the match? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's t it's going to be tough. I will say that, like, coming off the high from today to... Um, to uh, to have to play Fabian tomorrow, I mean to have to win one match and then then win a second match. Um, but you know, I I would say that if I look at this event, I felt that yesterday was the day that I played the worst by far. And I mean, it's really unfortunate because Fabiano also had a bad day. I mean, if Fabiano was playing well, I wouldn't have anything to complain about. But he played, he didn't play his best either. So I think um, you know, I'll probably come out tomorrow, try to play good chess, and um, I, I mean, obviously I have to win two matches, but uh, you play and you see what happens.